Welcome to my third video in this drum scanning series. In this video, I answer the question, what are the minimum essential components needed to perform a drum scan? But first, please be sure to subscribe, like, hit that bell icon, and leave me a comment below. It really does help my channel grow. There are a variety of drum scanners on the used market, with the more common brands arguably being Aztec, Haltech, and Heidelberg. As expected, there are differences among the models, and I can't speak to all those variations because I don't own a copy of all of them. So this video is going to be focused on my Haltech 6500 Scan Master. The main component is the drum scanner unit. It has a rocker switch on the back of the unit to power it on and a rudimentary LCD screen on the front of the unit. The drum is placed inside the unit and secured into a carriage assembly that moves the drum across the optical sensor. There are two tungsten halogen bulbs that provide illumination via a fiber optic cable across the film or artwork. On the back of the unit, there are two SCSI ports. In case you were wondering, SCSI stands for Small Computer System Interface. One port is used to insert this terminating adapter that tells the computer that there are no other SCSI devices daisy-chained to the system. In order to connect the scanner to a computer, a SCSI 2 cable, HPDB50 male to CN50 male, is connected to the other SCSI port. This cable will plug into a SCSI card like the Adaptec 2930 that I found brand new and sealed in the box off of eBay. As far as a computer is concerned, it must be capable of accepting PCI SCSI cards. I ended up getting this Dell OptiFlex 755 for free from Kevin Gregg at Affordable Computer Solutions here in Las Vegas. Many thanks to Kevin for his generous contribution. I'm running Windows XP SP3 and use Silverfast 6.6 .6 to control the scanner. I should point out that Aztec does have their own software for the drum scanner called Digital Photo Lab or DPL for short, but it requires a software dongle. One of the reasons that I'm using Silverfast is because I have the DPL version 5.0 software, but I'm missing the software dongle that would allow me to use the program. Basically, the CD is a coaster without the dongle. Aztec does sell a newer version of DPL that can run more modern operating systems like Windows 10 that utilize 64-bit platforms. The main benefit is that you can create file sizes greater than 4 gigabytes. I'm limited to 3 gigabytes because of the limitations of Windows XP. In practical terms, all that means is that I can't scan 8x10 film above 2500 ppi. The price difference between Silverfast and DPL is about $1,000. Since I didn't know if I could get this system up and running properly, it was comforting to be able to download a trial version of Silverfast for testing my setup before throwing more money at it. As a side note, I haven't found Silverfast or Windows XP to be limiting factors in the quality of my scans. I've produced several large and smaller prints from my drum scan files and have never once wondered if I could improve the files by using DPL. At the peak of drum scanning popularity, we didn't have the outstanding tools for image manipulation that software like Photoshop has today. So the tools in older software like DPL were paramount in a drum scanner operator's ability to get the very best scans possible. For me, I'm only interested in getting a solid basic scan and therefore leave the finishing touches like sharpening, color correction, rotation, etc. to Photoshop. The final essential component needed is a drum to mount your film or artwork to. Haltech made two sizes for the 6500 and 7500 ScanMaster models. There is a large 8-inch drum that accommodates pieces up to 18 by 23 inches and a 4-inch drum that accommodates artwork up to 18 by 11 inches. Other than size, the main difference is that when using the large 8-inch drum, scans are limited to 2500 ppi, while the small 4-inch drum can be used to achieve 5000 ppi and is subsequently highly sought after. Finding used drums that are in functional condition is difficult because many of them develop microcracks or what is referred to as crazing in the acrylic. If you are scanning film, crazing shows up in the file and renders your image useless. However, if you are just scanning reflective work, crazing won't matter at all. One last luxury is the drum mounting station. While it is possible to mount your artwork with the drum installed in the scanner, Having this station makes it more convenient. 
My scanner is located in a bottom cabinet that doesn't have a lot of room to maneuver in. So being able to work at an ergonomically appropriate height sure is a welcome privilege. Additionally, any runoff liquid or loose particulates aren't falling into your scanner, which would then require additional time to clean. Since these drum mounting stations were an option at the time of purchase, they are pretty difficult to find on the used market because not everybody opted for this accessory. I'd like to take a moment to thank Armando for selling me his. It would be years before I would find one on the used market. I'd also like to thank Michael from Scan Solutions for all his sage advice in helping me get my system set up. In my next drum scanning series video, I'll cover all of the consumables needed to mount your artwork to the drum. As always, thanks for watching.